the appraiser's job is to remain an unbiased third party. Some people say, well, they're there at least to protect the lender. No, they're not. Once again, if they were there to protect the lender, then they would then become an advocate or a broker, if you will, an agent for the lender, and they are not. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back, my friends, my friends, to the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair. want to do a full episode today sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode is, uh, well, it's the software I use. It's the software that hundreds of appraisers use, thousands of appraisers use across the country, and there's a reason. They are the leader in appraisal report writing software. You can find out more by calling them at 800 Alamode or picking up the computer and uh, putting in the search bar, alamode.com. Datamaster is a software service, a technical software service that saves you time, folks. And when it saves you time, it saves you money. Datamaster USA is where you go to find out more, datamasterusa.com. Finally, we're sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Working RE, of course, is the magazine that I read a couple times a week. Keeps me up to date on what's going on in the appraisal world, the world that I've chosen my career in. Working RE is in workingrealestate.com. Had a, uh, an interesting experience today. I had one of my colleagues, uh, shout out to Jarrett, who sent me a video uh, of a YouTube channel, local YouTube channel, um, who they, do, they try to do a good job, right? Getting information out. Uh, now, this is a real estate company, not an appraisal company, but a real estate company here local. And they put out information about, um, well, stuff, um, real estate, right? The market and what's going on. And they try to be a leader, if you will, in uh, the social media end. Um, and honestly, there's not a lot of competition out there in the Idaho Falls market. Let's face it, we're not a big market, but they try their best to get good information out there. He sent me over a video on appraisals and what is an appraisal and what's a, the job of an appraiser and that kind of thing. And I want to be very clear up front in this episode. My purpose in today's episode is to get good information out there. It is not necessarily to correct the record, if you will, though it will probably come across that way. That's not my intention. My intention is to educate, right? The purpose of the podcast in general, the Appraiser Coach podcast, is to get good information out there. And my audience, for the most part, yes, I'm sure there's real estate agents that listen. I'm sure that there's lenders out there that listen. I'm sure there's AMCs out there that listen. And even GSEs once in a while that probably tune in uh, on their way to work. Um, But for the most part, my audience is appraisers. And the reason I'm doing this episode There's only one reason, is to get good information out to appraisers so that if you find in your local market that some of this stuff is going on, and again, I'm not being negative at all. I respect this company. I've had a great conversation with them over Facebook uh, over the last uh, couple uh, couple of hours. Uh, and they have, they, it's been a good conversation. I can't stress that enough. It's been a good conversation, right? It's a good conversation to have. My purpose in today's episode is not to throw anybody under the bus. It's to, number one, applaud this company for trying to get information out there, but it's also to educate appraisers that when you come across some of the language that is sometimes spoken about concerning appraisers and appraisals, that you that you take the time to correct the, the record. Uh, again, this is not to, to, to pat myself on the back, but I didn't just listen to that YouTube video and go, huh, interesting, and move on. I felt like it would be a good thing to, to jump in and respectfully, if you read my conversation with this company, you would not think on either side that there was any animosity at all. And there's none, at least on my side. I feel none. I didn't feel any from this other company. It was just a respectful, hey, thanks for doing that video. You know, there was a couple things said in there that it would be awesome if I could, you know, help correct the record on. I mean, I was not inviting myself on their show, but kind of was. Uh, They did not invite me on their show. In fact, they they informed me that they don't uh, record the show very often and it's not, you know, an ongoing thing. Uh, But they, you know, to their credit said, hey, talk to us. What did we say that was not correct? And we had a really good, and I can't stress that enough, professional back and forth conversation about some of the things that were said. And I, I thought it was great. And hats off uh, to this company. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, you know, shout out their name. Maybe they would want that. I don't know. I don't, I don't have their permission to do so. So I'm just going to talk in generalities here. And some of the things that I say today may or may not have been said in their video. Um, but, but these are some of the common things that I think are said amongst real estate agents, uh, lenders sometimes, AMCs even kind of, not really, but, but could. Uh, but some of the, what I'm going to call myths 
of the appraiser, right? Myths of the appraisal process. What is the purpose of an appraiser? What is the purpose of an appraisal? And I want to dive into some of those things. So if you experience the same thing, and it could be as simple as you're in a home, you're doing an inspection, you're at the front door and you say, are there any other uh, questions? And they might bring up one of these things that I'm, again, I'm going to label as myths because I don't think they're, they're quite truthful enough. Now, to the credit of the company that I reached out to and, and had this great conversation with, uh, one of the things that they said, and I think this is true, right? They said, as we were having this conversation, I said, you know, uh, as I was correcting some of these things, they, they acknowledged that, yeah, okay, maybe technically that's correct, right? But we're speaking to buyers. We're speaking to potential sellers, right? We're speaking to a different audience than you are speaking to. And thus the language that we use might be slightly different than what you are using. And I, and I, and I said, yeah, I understand that. I agree with that, right? hundred percent, right? Your audience matters. That's why I prefaced today's episode with saying my audience is appraisers, right? And, and appraisers, I'm imploring you to, to, to educate, right? To, to help correct the record when you see things or, or hear things that are what, what I just call incorrect. I'll give you a, a very, very common one. And by the way, I did an episode years ago called Language Matters, or, or maybe it's called Words Matter, right? Go back and, and find it out and, and listen to it. Because some of the things that we say and, and, and that we hear people say, right? One of the biggest ones is the appraiser came in low, right? I hear this frequently. The appraiser came in low, right? Think about that for just a second. Is it possible that the contract is high? I mean, we never think about it from that perspective, or at least they don't think about it from that perspective. It's always, hey, we've got a willing buyer, we've got a willing seller, and it's 300000 and the appraiser, the damn appraiser came in at two fifty. the appraiser came in low. Not, hey, the person came in from out of state, and the market's totally different there, they didn't really take the time to do their due diligence, and they wanted the home, and they fell in love with the kitchen, and they ended up paying $50,000 more than market would bear, right? So language matters. And I understand, again, I understand language has to do with the audience that you're speaking to, but I think it's so important that we correct the record, right? When I hear that, I often, I, almost annoyingly so, I often will jump in, again, respectfully, not defensively. And I think that matters too. The way you educate makes all the difference. We're not here to argue. We're not here to bash. We're not here to even correct them. We're here to educate, right? And, and, and that's, my, that's my goal today is to encourage that appraisers don't keep quiet. When you hear somebody say the, appraiser, the appraisal came in low, Take an opportunity to educate. Well, that's an interesting word. Let's talk about that for just a moment. What do you mean by the appraiser came in low? Well, it was 300000 We had a willing buyer, a willing seller. They came in lower than, than the, okay, well, great. Then say that. The appraisal came in lower than the contract price. But let's now reframe that for a second and, and look at it from a different perspective, a different paradigm, if you will. Let's look at it from what is the purpose of an appraisal and an appraiser, right? What is their job? And maybe, just maybe, the appraiser did their job correctly and the contract is too darn high, right? That's the reason that the lender hires the appraiser anyway, to make sure that the collateral is there so that the risk is low. And all of these pieces and parts fit together. The other one I hear quite often is the house didn't appraise. Do you ever heard that one? Well, the house, well, guys, the house didn't appraise. Well, yeah, it did. Well, first of all, the, the house didn't do the appraisal. So I guess the house technically didn't appraise anything, right? Um, but the house got an appraisal. That did happen. You can't say the house didn't appraise because the house got an appraisal and there was an appraisal done on the house, right? <laughs> or the property. Let's, let's, again, let's be specific about, about uh, you know, our, our jargon. But you know what they're saying, right? The house didn't appraise for contract price or more. And that was their concern. So this is an op awesome opportunity to educate and to, and to help individuals to understand that there's a different perspective. Again, and by the way, one of the things that I said to this company in our conversation is, listen, I never said that you were wrong in what you said, right? I've never made that accusation. I absolutely firmly believe that from your perspective and to your audience, what you are saying is accurate. The problem is, is there's a different perspective and a different audience to consider here. And specifically, it's important to educate your audience on what the job of an appraiser is. I wanna dig into some of those things when we get back from the break. First, I wanna pause and remind you that we are sponsored by Working RE Magazine. Talk about education, right? That's what we're talking about today, education. If you want some good information, education about what's going on in the appraisal world, folks, it's as easy as going to Working RE and signing up for their free, F-R-E-E, -E, free newsletter. And I know some of you say, well, Dustin, nothing's free. I've gotta, I've gotta get stuff in my inbox, right? Folks, trust me, you're gonna want this stuff in your inbox. And if you don't, all you gotta do is hit delete, right? And I'll be honest, I'm looking around to see if anybody's listening. I do sometimes delete Working RE Magazine without even opening it up. I look at the subject line, I'm like, eh, not for me today, right? That's the cool thing about it. You can click on the stuff you like and you can delete the stuff you don't. But I'm telling you folks, you're gonna like a whole lot of stuff at workingre.com. Again, it's workingre.com. Datamaster, datamasterusa.com is where you go to find out more about the company that will take the data that you find and put it in your report, right? 
It's technology, folks. It's one button. You click it. It goes in your report. Yeah, you got to check and make sure it's accurate, but it will be. Yeah, you're, you're responsible to make sure the data is in there the, the right way. It will be. Data Master USA is going to save you about 40 minutes on every report that you do. I'm talking like 1004s, right? Every full report that you do, about 40 minutes, who doesn't want to save that time? And who doesn't want to save that money? DataMasterUSA.com. DataMasterUSA.com. Speaking of saving time and money, a la mode will help you to do that, right? A la mode is there to help the appraiser to be more efficient and more effective at what they do. God bless a la mode. If you're with any other company, check them out. Go to alamode.com or call 800 a la mode. All right, welcome back to the program, everybody. I want to stress that the conversation that I had with a local YouTube company, no, not YouTube company, local agency who is doing YouTube videos was very respectful, professional. I felt like it was it was very, I, I didn't feel any animosity on either side. Hats off to them uh, for for having this great conversation with me and uh, and and for putting great information out there. It was a, it was a great uh, conversation back and forth. I think some education happened, uh, but it, it spawned this idea of doing a podcast and and helping just share the love, if you will, share the the information that I think sometimes we hear from others that need to be corrected, right? That need to be educated on. One of them we already brought up. A frequent one that we hear is the appraiser came in low or the appraisal came in low. Folks, what a great opportunity to explain to somebody what the purpose of an appraisal is, right? And that, that a contract is not a valuation. I hear this often from real estate agents. And by the way, the, the, the YouTube video did not say this, right? But I do hear this often from other agents sometimes. Well, listen, we got a willing buyer and a willing seller. So there's the value. <laughs> okay, well then my, my answer to that is then why, why get an appraisal? Why doesn't the lender just take the contract and run with it? And I think anybody that is honest with themselves understands why they don't do that. There's a reason why an appraisal is done. Because if the value was the contract, if the value was a willing buyer and a willing seller made a deal, there would be no reason for an appraisal. I think this is important to, to point out that the appraiser's job is not to justify the contract. That is not the appraiser's job. The appraiser's job is to come up with a well-supported opinion of value. Now, what the buyer, the seller, the lender, the real estate agents on either side tend to, and, and then do with that information is up to them. But one of the things that I want to do is point out that the appraiser's job is not to protect the buyer. I often hear this, that the appraiser's job is to protect the buyer. Now, the result of an appraisal, right, the answer to an appraisal may determine what a buyer does, right? The buyer may take that information and make a decision based on certain information. They, there may even be an appraisal contingency, and probably is, in the purchase sale agreement. In other words, if the appraisal doesn't come in at least at the contract price, then we, you know, we have a, a way to back out or renegotiate, or you know, sometimes there's an escalation clause or something of that nature. But what information is provided on the appraisal may affect what the lender does, may affect what the buyer does, it may affect what the seller does, right? It may affect many things, but that is not the job of the buyer. Now, why is that important? I'm sure some of you are saying, well, Dustin, that's silly, right? You're saying that the job of the appraiser is not to protect the buyer, but you're also saying that the appraisal may protect the buyer. Yep, I'm saying both of those things, right? I think it's important to point out for this reason. Specifically, the appraiser needs to remain an unbiased third party. And the moment that that appraiser becomes an advocate for the buyer, and folks, when you say that the appraisal is there to protect the buyer, you're really saying that the appraiser is an advocate for the buyer. And they are not. I want to make it very clear that the appraiser's job is to remain an unbiased third party. Some people say, well, they're there at least to protect the lender. No, they're not. Once again, if they were there to protect the lender, then they would then become an advocate or a broker, if you will, an agent for the lender. And they are not. In fact, we are one of the only, if not the only, unbiased third party in the whole transaction from start to finish. Think about it. The buyer has skin in the game. The seller has skin in the game. The agent, the, the, the listing agent, the buying agent, both have skin in the game. The lender has skin in the game, right? So many people have skin in the game. Now, maybe you could argue that the inspector doesn't have skin in the game, okay? But even then, I would say you're probably stretching it because I've got a lot of inspections and they are very much on the seller or on the buyer side, right? They invite you out to the property. They show you what you need to be aware of, right? Even that is not the same as an appraisal in the unbiased third party side of an appraiser, right? So I understand that sometimes the language seems, okay, Dustin, really, you're going to nitpick over, I say that the, that the appraiser's job is to protect the buyer. And you're saying that the appraiser is to remain an unbiased third party, but they might 
you know, the, 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 the buyer may take the results of an appraisal and it may affect what they do. It, really, there's that big of a difference? Absolutely. I think it's super important to understand that the appraiser is to remain an unbiased third party. They are not an advocate for anybody. Therefore, they are not there to protect the buyer. Okay. The other thing I often hear is that the job of the appraiser is to say whether or not the purchase is correct. Okay. Uh, the job of the appraiser is to say whether the purchase contract is correct. No, folks, it is not. Now, now some might say, well, D Dustin, I, I understand that appraisers have a copy of the purchase sale agreement. And that usually is true. 90% of the time, we do have a copy of the purchase sale agreement because part of our job is to analyze that contract. Okay. That is different than deciding whether or not that contract is, is within market value. Now, I know this sounds like a stupid and, again, silly I need a really tiny, silly thing to be to be arguing, right? Dustin, really? You're parsing... Folks, trust me, this stuff is important. I know it sounds like it's a small distinction, right? When you say, Dustin, the, the job of the appraiser is not to say whether the purchase is okay, right? But 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 yet they have a copy of the purchase sale agreement and they do come up with a purchase or a, a value, rather, uh, a market value. And that that's... You're trying to make that... Yes, I'm trying to make that distinction. I think it's important because, again, it goes back to the purpose of an appraisal. And the purpose of an appraisal is to be an unbiased opinion of value. And thus, the appraiser is the unbiased appraiser, right? The unbiased third party, okay? Some of the other things that I hear, uh, other myths, if you will, is that the borrower ordered the appraisal, okay? Folks, the borrower did not order the appraisal, trust me, okay? Unless a borrower looking at a, a potential loan, whether it be a purchase or otherwise, wants to go hire an appraiser outside that system and specifically say, hey, I'm looking at, for example, I've, I've been hired before to do, um, you know, a, a prelim to, to PMI removal, right? I don't want to go through the whole process of finding out if I have 20% equity unless I have a pretty good idea that I have 20% equity. So if someone might call me up and say, listen, we're trying to get our PMI off and I, I need to find out if my home is even in the ballpark of whether this is even possible. We make it very clear up front. Well, no problem. We can do that for you. We can do a private appraisal for you. We can tell you what the value of the home is, right? But please understand that you cannot use that appraisal as part of your PMI removal. You cannot take that then to the bank and say, hey guys, I got this appraisal. See, I've got this in hand. Here, here, here's my appraisal. Let's get that PMI off. And as long as they understand that, right? Remember, the borrower in general, when we're talking about loans, did not order the appraisal, even though I find I hear that often. In fact, they often say that well, the borrower ordered the appraisal. The, the borrower uh, paid for the appraisal, and thus the borrower owns the appraisal. No, folks, the borrower is rarely the client. Almost never is the borrower in a loan the client on the appraisal. The lender is, right? The lender may now. Let me be very clear. And, and this is a conversation that I have with homeowners all the time. Well, I paid for it. Right? I need a copy of it. They'll call us up. They'll, they're, they're angry at the value. They're angry at something. You got the square footage wrong. You, you know, often in our area, the, the, the big one is you didn't get enough bedrooms and bathrooms. Well, yeah, we did. You just didn't notice that, you know, we had to separate them into a GLA and basement, right? We have a lot of basements in this area. They look at GLA and they think, oh, my house is twice that big. They look at uh, the bedroom count. They're like, I've got two more bedrooms in the count. Yeah, they're in the, they're in the basement, guys. And, and they're there. Just go down one line, right? So we, so we need to do some education there. But we often get these calls from borrowers who say, well, I, I paid for it when we say, hey, listen, we really can't talk to you much about the value on, uh, you know, we can talk to you about facts and figures in the appraisal. You know, if we got the square footage wrong, fine, let's, let's talk about that. When you start talking about comps, when you start talking about adjustments, at that point, we need to kind of, you know, steer the conversation in a different direction or, or end it all, all, all together. And then, of course, the, the answer, well, I paid for it, right? I own the appraisal. Well, not quite. Not quite. So we have that education as well, right? And, and keep in mind, there's a lot of myths that come about with the relationship between the lender the borrower, the appraiser, the agent, right? There's a lot of confusion within that realm as well. But please understand that the lender is our client. Now, another myth out there is that the lender cannot choose the appraiser. We hear this often as well. The lender can't choose the appraiser. Again, not true. Not true. Now, the lender can't have a biased uh, position in that choice. In other words, the lender, because of regulation, can't say, you know what? I like this appraiser. That Dustin guy always comes in, always hits our value. Let's give him 100% of our deals, right? That's when you have a problem. But absolutely, the lender can choose the appraiser, right? As long as they are working within the, the regulation side of things. Now, this usually comes up with the AMCs. Well, they have to use AMCs. They can't choose the appraiser directly, so they use AMCs so they can indirectly choose the appraiser. No, again, not true. An AMC's job is multiple, right? Uh, it could be regulation side of things. It could be, uh, you know, making sure that there is a, a firewall, if you will, between the loan officer and the appraiser. It could be just it's easier to go to an AMC and choose an appraiser than it is to go out and, and start, you know, making phone calls and, and sending emails to find your own. There's a lot of purposes for an, for an AMC, but th it is a myth, folks, to think that the lender cannot choose the appraiser because they absolutely they absolutely can. Okay, as long as again, as long as they fit within the regulations. Okay, um, you know, that's mostly it. I, there's there's other things I think that come 
come up um, on occasion. And again, I think a lot of these things seem silly. I mean, again, we had a very cordial conversation back and forth about this particular episode. I thought it was a positive on both sides. But, you know, on one side, they were, I think, they didn't say these words, but if you read between the lines, it's like, come on, Dustin, aren't you being a little bit, you know, nitpicky? I mean, really? I mean, is this really that? Imp- I really think it is, folks. I really do. I think that, and, and granted, and I, and I answered back again, they didn't ask that specific question, but I did say, listen, it probably seems like I'm being a little bit nitpicky. And let's be honest, appraisers, you know, we've been run down in the past and we get to def- defensive. I hope I haven't come across that way. That's certainly not my intention to be defensive here. It's, it's more to educate and, and to have a, a cordial conversation and, and, and uh, you know, build a relationship, if you will. And I can see why from their perspective, it seems like we're being a little nitpicky, right? That we're going a little over the top when it comes to really, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do that. I mean, come on. Is it really that big of a deal? I do think it is. And here's why. Okay. Again, as we close up today, let me just say the, the most important thing that I think can be understood here is that the job of the appraiser, and I've said it multiple times today, is to be the unbiased third party. And most of these myths that we've talked about today, and most of the things that I took exception with in the video went to the opposite of that. And that's why I think it's important to point these things out. The appraiser is an unbiased third party. And anytime we become an advocate in anybody's eyes for one side or the other, or that our job changes in what we're really out there to do, which is to determine the market value of a property, all of a sudden there becomes other problems, right? And, and myths develop into miseducation, and miseducation develops into misunderstanding, and misunderstanding develops into, well, there's a whole plethora of things. Uh, you know, the dominoes fall at that point. So, hey, Thank you. Again, shout out. I'm not going to name the company because I don't have permission to do so, but shout out to these companies that are trying to get good education out there. Thank you for having a good, open conversation with me on on, on Facebook. And by the way, it was a private, when I say Facebook, it was a private message back and forth. Uh, and they were very respectful and professional. And I hope we both learned on, on either side of that uh, conversation. Folks, if you want to learn more about how to get your voice out there, one of the things we talk about in the All-Star team is marketing and, and getting your voice out there and having a, a Facebook page and, and engaging in these conversations with others and, and becoming known and becoming known as the expert. If you want to learn more about that and more, please join our All-Star team, theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.